Hey friends, today's topic of discussion is team building in 2024. And I call it that because if you're still team building the way you built your team 15 years ago, there's a lot of things that are the same, but there's a lot of things that are different. And I feel like team building is an ever evolving thing, which is why I have so many videos and trainings and different things all about it. And so I wanted to make this video <clears throat> to show you just some new thoughts for uh, this new year. So the first thing I want you to think about is what were the reasons that you yourself decided to pull the trigger and start a Mary Kay business? Okay, was it the information that you heard or was it the inspiration that you felt? Was it the community that you witnessed, you know, in front of your eyes? And I want you to think about, were you a consultant who signed same day on the spot? Or were you a consultant who signed after two layers? Meaning, you know, if someone shared the opportunity with you, they sent you home with a video, followed up on that, then maybe had you out to another event, followed up on that. How many times did it take for you to join? Or were you one of my favorite people who, uh, you know, signed after multiple layers over multiple months or even years, and it took a really long time, right? None are, none are bad. And then, um, also think about, you know, in, in, when I did this in a room full of women, there were so many people, you guys, this last group here, if you initially told your consultant, you would never do this, but you're here now as a consultant watching this training, right? Um, and, and that's important to keep in mind. Um, so here's the first question I have for you. What if asking someone to join your team was as ask easy as asking them to buy a mascara? And when you sell mascaras, right, you tell people the kinds of mascaras we have and you ask them if they want to buy it. Um, team building isn't every, any different than that. Team building isn't any different than booking, right? When we're booking people, you give people the info and you ask them if they want to do it. With team building, you're sharing about our business opportunity and then asking them if it would benefit them in their life right now. So first off, I want to say that team building is one of the most important parts of working full circle. Okay, so when we work full circle in our business, it means that we're selling products, we are booking future parties, we're getting referrals, and we're sharing the opportunity, and we're doing it all. And it doesn't matter how we're doing appointments, if we're doing them virtually, in person, from a helicopter, like however we're doing beauty sessions today, it doesn't matter. Working full circle is still relevant. It is still the best way to build a business and build it consistent where you can actually, here's what's cool, you guys, when you work full circle over time, your income becomes predictable. You've just made an unpredictable thing predictable. My college girlfriends are always like, Emily, I don't know how you do this. Your paycheck is never the same. And I'm like, ew, your paycheck is the same every week, right? But you can actually make your business predictable when you work full circle. And if you think about it, if you're skipping team building, okay, and, we, and I find a lot of consultants skip team building because we're just scared or we think we're not going to do it right or we're waiting for the wind speed to be like 15 miles an hour when our hair is like, you know, just past our shoulders and you know, like we're waiting for this perfect time because we just think someday I'm going to be a, an expert at it without practicing. See, none of this logic makes any sense to me, but it's the logic that's out there, right? So, um, but think about it. If working full circle is the way to momentum, like if you think about a circle, like a wheel, like let's say whether you're going up a hill in your business, you're going down a hill or you're coming out of a valley, right? You're you're pushing or you're you're pushing a circle down and it's just rolling on its own or you're, you know, pushing a circle up a hill if you're coming out of a season in your business where you have to really rebuild, Right. If you're skipping team building, you are working full triangle instead of full circle. Now, I want you to imagine pushing a triangle up a mountain, out of a valley, or even down a hill. I mean, even pushing a triangle, I mean, it would be like you'd have to pick it up. And each time, it's going to feel so stinking hard. So let's just make it easy and work full circle, right? Okay, here is why... I believe sharing the opportunity at your appointment, that you are at the appointment, making sure that you do work full circle. Because when you leave that beauty session, whether you hit end on a Zoom or you leave their house and you're shutting the door, okay, this thing starts happening. Are you ready for it? I've got a prop. You're going to love this. This is what happens as soon as you leave her house. 
okay, time's a ticking. If you've ever heard this expression before, it is true, it was true probably 30 years ago and it is true today. People join your team closest to the product. People recruit closest to the product because the products, you guys, our products, um, I believe our products are so good. Like, can we agree our products are so good? And they're so good that in fact, this is how good they, like when we go and do beauty sessions, people start to feel that the impossible is now possible because our products are so good. So, it, you know, they might've arrived to your appointment thinking I could never do something like this, but they feel that product on their face and they go, eh, just kidding. These products are kind of that good. Right. <laughs> so, um, so as soon as you leave, this is ticking. And so this is why a sense of urgency when you are leaving the appointment is so gosh darn important, but here's what we do. You guys, I think, a lot of consultants, I'll ask them about their appointment. Like, oh my gosh, you have this party. Tell me who is there. And they're like, oh, this girl that I absolutely love. And this other girl, I think they'd be really good on my team. Great. Like, did you, you know, what'd you do next? Well, I, I got to follow up with them this week. And there's no appointment and there's no rhyme or reason or system or thought process behind it. You guys, time is ticking. We got to have a sense of urgency if we want to have people on our team. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to teach you is the what, the how. Okay, this isn't as important as the stuff I'm going to teach you after, but I'm going to go through it really quick. How do I team build at my appointments? You guys, people come to my appointments all the time with me and watch and go, that's all you do. Yep, that's all I do. Because it's not as important as you think, as important as the stuff beforehand and afterhand. So um, what I do is beforehand. A lot of times people arrive at my appointments having already heard the opportunity in some fashion. And the way that I do that is if it's a virtual party, when they are signing up on my Google form to register, I have a section where they can click on another Google form and it, it just has this great wording. In fact, I'll read it to you. So this is the wording on my Google form. It says bonus. If you are willing to watch a quick four questions career survey and give feedback, you get 10. Oh, you get a, sorry, you get a trendy fun pair of earrings. Here's the link. It will notify me when you filled it out. Thanks again. If you've already done this survey recently, there's no need to do it again. And so a lot of times they just want the free earrings at that point because we haven't met yet. They'll click on that survey and it, the survey just has um, different videos that people can watch. Uh, four to six minute videos and then, you know, the information on how much it costs to get signed up and then, you know, it lists all the benefits and what, what they think, right? So they hear the information ahead of time. When I get to the appointment, right, I tell my I story at the beginning because have you ever noticed that if you're in person or even virtual and you're kind of hanging out with people ahead of time waiting for everyone else to show up on the Zoom or to show up in person and they start asking you, so how long have you been doing this? What do you love about it? And they want to know, right? So I tell my I story at the beginning of all my appointments. I have a great document on my website that gives you uh, insight into how to create that. But it's basically, you know, just, just your quick story of how you got started, what you love about Mary Kay. And I always say at the end, you know, watch me tonight and see if you could ever see yourself doing something like this. And if it would benefit you in your life right now, um, I'm looking for great women who dot, 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 whatever it is that you're looking for. Then, the, then at the end of the party, and of course I'm talking throughout, as I'm talking about products, talking about what I love about the products, and maybe there's a story here and there about Mary Kay, the business side, or my kids helping me with the business, or just something like that. Then at the end, I always do a little game called, it's not even a game, I don't call it a game anymore, I, it's called What's in My Bag? And this is what I say at my appointments, I say, okay, we're going to play this kind of super corny thing. Hey, just caution. It's called what's in my bag. And I, you know, play up the, the cheesy nature of the thing. Right. And so what I'm going to do is I have this little bag and it has items in here and I'm going to pass this around and I want you to pick an item out of here that interests you. And so there's different items in here. You do not have to have these exact same items. I'm going to tell you what the items are in a second, because all of the ways typically that we share the opportunity at appointments have to do with the acronym Mrs. Cab, M-R-S-C-A-B. M is money, R is recognition, S is self-growth, self C is the cars, A is advancement and advantages, and R is 
or B, oh my gosh, be your own boss and flexibility. And so what I think is a good assignment for you, if you're not, if you're working full triangle, okay, a good assignment for you is to write the M, the R, the S, the C, the A, the B vertically on a paper, okay? And then what I want you to do is next to each letter, I want you to think of two points that you want to say about it. One point should be like an actual fact. For example, money. We make 50% of what we sell. That is a fact, right? The second thing could maybe be a personal experience with the money. Like, And what I love so much about the money is that I was able to take my kids to Disney World or whatever the truth is for you. And whatever you feel like saying, it could be two factual points too, but the more that you can weave in your personal experience, that's what women want to hear. So you write those one to three, one to three points about each thing. And then all what's in my bag is, is taking those one to three things you wrote down on your paper. And you know what? Take the paper with you. There's an idea, take the paper with you the first couple of times and just take the paper with you. It's okay, nobody knows. You can put it in a little sheet protector and everyone will just think you're you know, making sure you cover all the points. It's not gonna be a big deal. Each one of the items in my bag represents the Mrs. Cab things, right? Now, if you can't find this stuff, if you're a mom, I'm sorry, but you've got a bigger advantage than everyone else because there's like little junks sitting around your house that you could probably steal from your kids. That's kind of what I did to make this bag. So this is a, yeah, a makeup bag. So I have a chair. This is from a court of sales ring. This is for recognition. I took this just monopoly money, the Mary Kay monopoly money, but you could just do regular monopoly money for the money or play money or just anything you can find. Um, the car, which is, you know, obviously the car. And this is a McDonald's toy. I stole from my kids like five years ago. It's still going strong. A rubber band for flexibility. That's an easy one. This is a Lego ladder, like for career advancement. You could do, uh, I don't know, you could even find a career path brochure. I mean, whatever, be creative. And then a mirror is for self-confidence and personal growth. So basically I just say, okay, we're going to do this quick thing. Um, I love sharing a little bit about what I do at all my appointments. And so we're going to do this quick thing. I'm going to pass this bag around. You can look and I want you to pick out something that interests you. So they go around the table or you can even do it virtually. I do this virtually too, where I just like, okay, I'm gonna pull something out of my bag and the first person who guesses the benefit of being a Mary Kay consultant is gonna get a virtual raffle ticket or however you do your virtual parties. And so I go like this, okay, you guys ready for the first one? And then they like, or whatever, or if it's Facebook Live, then they write it in the comments, the first person who put it in the comments. There's a million ways you can do this. And then if they can't guess it, I just help them. And then I say your one to three points about each thing. And then at the end, I always get an interest scale. So I find out like, what's your interest on the interest scale? I've got some sitting here on my desk, right? So my little profile cards, there's a one to 10 scale at the bottom. One means I would rather eat hot dogs off the floor at Mary's wedding than ever be a Mary Kay consultant. Okay, so that's a one. And just a psychology thing, the number you end talking about is the number they're going to remember. So I always start with one. So one is I would rather eat the hot dogs off Mary's floor at her graduation party coming up. You know, whatever personal thing you learned about them. Just kidding. It means like it was fun learning about it, but it's so not for me. You can't say five. And I always joke and say, we live in the Midwest. You guys know you cannot put a five on any interest scale form because everyone will circle it. And everybody always laughs because it's true. And 10 means, notice how I'm ending on 10, 10 means I totally just want to give this a try and see if it's for me. There's so many ways that this would benefit me right now. Um, and you, I just text you a quick link and you can actually just fill it out right here at the table or right now if you're across Zoom or Facebook Live. So that's the, that's the how. Okay, it really doesn't sound hard. The how isn't hard. But if you're not doing the how, you're working full triangle instead of working full circle. Okay, um, so here's what happens and why I think we aren't recruiting more. Ready for this one? This is where it gets a little spicy and this is where I have a little bit of fun. Okay, now we're racing against time. So this is one reason we aren't committed to a sense of urgency. And I don't know if it was just, if it's 
because I'm very competitive, like competition is one of my strengths. That like when I leave a party, I, I think I'm thinking about this hourglass. So if you saw nothing else from this video, you are getting sleepy. Hopefully you're not. But I want you to think about this hourglass whenever you leave an appointment or turn a zoom off. But here's what we do. And this is where we're missing the best people ever that we could ever have in our team. Is we look at her interscale number or what she's telling us. And we read it or hear it as absolute fact. So she put a three in the interest scale, which is an absolute fact that she's really not interested. That's what we think in our minds. And here's what I believe. I think a lot of women don't have the confidence to put the number they actually want to put, or they're nervous just because of anecdotal or past evidence that like if I sort of even indicate a little bit of interest to a salesperson, she's going to jump all over me and I'm going to get really uncomfortable, even though I'm not like that. And hopefully you're not like that either. Right. So they don't have the confidence to put it. The second thing more than that is this. Okay. Our opportunity is a unicorn. Do you believe that? Because I believe that like there's nothing else like it. There's lots of ways that people can make side cash, right? They could Uber Eats, DoorDash, Drive for Uber. Uh, they could start an Etsy shop. I mean, they could get a part-time job, blah, 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 blah. The difference is we have personal development like none other. We have community like none other. Um, and that personal growth like none other. So I'm sorry, where are you going to get that from Uber Eats, right? <laughs> so it is those things. And obviously the money too is, is really good. So it is, our opportunity is a unicorn. Have you ever had someone that you shared the opportunity with say, well, why isn't everyone doing this it's, if it's so great? Like they, they almost can't like believe it, right? So, so when you're doing an appointment, you just told a room of really smart women that you want on your team that unicorns are in fact real and that you can even prove it to them that unicorns are real, right? So you, t you invite this room of women that you've just shared the facts with that unicorns are real and not only that you end up bringing a real life living breathing sm horse smelling unicorn into their living room they're looking at it they're petting it right and this is what happens you might have a woman there who's like oh my gosh yep unicorns are real seeing is believing I'm a 10, sign me up, okay? Then you have another group that's like, I'm 80% sure that what I'm looking at is real, but I need to secure funds for unicorn food, ask my husband to build a pen. So I'm like a six to an eight. So those are the two groups. These two groups are the people that we tend to pursue in our business because da 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 it's easy, <laughs> right? Like, it's so easy. It's like, well, she's a 10, therefore I should sign her up. Obvious. And I'm not saying you shouldn't sign these people up. There's a great people in these two groups. But we are missing all of the people in group three because we are only pursuing these two because we, we're looking at their interest scale and their things as facts instead of mere suggestions. Or here's the point of the unicorn thing. Some of the really smart women that you want to have on your team who are going to build a very successful business and go on to become directors and national sales directors need time to process the fact that this unicorn is real. Like they haven't, you, you brought a living or a unicorn into the living room and they are just like, I am, is what I'm seeing really happening. I'm one of these people. You guys, sometimes like things will happen or someone will say something to me and I'm, I need like a minute, like my brain doesn't process really quick, but you give me 24 hours and man, I can come up with some really good stuff on whatever topic you brought up to me, but on the spot, not so much. And so those women are often the twos, the threes, the ones, the fours, the ones who write in five. Those are my favorite. Okay. So we only tend to pursue those top two people. Okay, I'm going to give you some tips on how to do that here in a second. Um, so here's what we're going to do with that group three. 
right? The ones that don't seem interested, but they just need time to wrap their brain around it. Those are sometimes the best people. I want to talk about it in terms of recruiting versus sharing. We used to use the word National Court of Recruiting. Now it's National Court of Sharing. Recruiting, if you think about it, top corporate offices recruit the people they want, meaning they go after, they pursue, they chase, they whatever, okay? So recruiting is deciding what you want and finding it. Sharing is, in my opinion, slapping Mrs. Cab spaghetti all over the wall and hoping and just like picking whatever sticks off of the cupboard and that's who we're recruiting, right? So here's how to start recruiting and stop just sharing is this first step. And it's really easy. Anyone at home can do this. So you're going to get a piece of bright colored cardstock paper. Doesn't have to be cardstock. The reason I always recommend cardstock is because this thing needs to come with you everywhere. So what I do, okay, my desk is a mess, full disclosure. Okay, so this is my, actually I have a lot of, this is clearly too good of a tip for me because I have a million of these. This is my date book. It's a three-year date book, which is the best. Okay, and and stuff like that, look at it, it's already doing it. It starts falling out of your date book. It's good, you want it to fall out because when it falls out, then you look at it. So I like to put things on cardstock because it just lasts longer and tends to fall out easier. And so what I have on here, so this is how you're going to start recruiting, is I want you to make your list. Okay, so this is assignment two. Assignment one is the Mrs. Cab, come up with one to three things. Assignment two is what is your list of non-negotiable things that you want, qualities you want in women that you want to have on your team? And I want you to make a list. Okay, I have to give you the million dollar matchmaker um, analogy. I have recently been watching at night, uh, Millionaire Matchmaker. It's a show on Netflix. It's a reality TV show. And it's this super bossy lady. She's adorable. Her name's Patty Stanger. And she sets up millionaires with, um, you know, who are having trouble finding love. She like finds people and finds love for them, right? And she's super bossy, which is why I love her. So one of the things, the reason I'm bringing this up is she did an episode and pretty much any episode is like this where um, she had this millionaire who was always picking the wrong kinds of women that were taking advantage of him. So she said, okay, what are your non-negotiables? What do you want in a wife? And he said, I want someone who wants kids. I want someone who's Jewish because religion is important to him. And I want someone who cares about their family because I have this big family and we gather. And so having someone that thinks family is important is important to me. And she said, okay, I'm going to set up a mixer for you, or I'm going to have all these women and she'll plant women that are the wrong kind for him on purpose just to kind of test him to see if he's really <laughs> listening to her. And she says, go up to each woman and say, are you, do you want to have kids, you know, in your future? Do you, you know, tell me about your family. Do you hang out with your family? Are you Jewish? And if they don't satisfy those three things, she's like, move on. Now, in our case, we aren't necessarily going to move on, but our reticular activating system, which is that dang thing in our brains that helps us see things. When we write down our list of non-negotiables on a paper that falls out and we look at it constantly, our brain is going to go to work, you know, guiding us in that direction. It's kind of how you think nobody has a blue car and you buy a blue car and suddenly blue cars are everywhere or there's no pregnant people. And then you get pregnant and you're like, every dang woman I see is pregnant. That's that reticular activating system in your brain. This is why your list of non-negotiables is so important. So I'm going to share mine. So it's what I want on my team in 2024. I want independent people who can just self-start, right? And get going, who want a leadership platform. We're building directors to build a national area. They're creative. I love creative people. Like they help me. They make me better. Women who do what they say they're going to do, honoring the commitments that they make, right? They want adventure because let's be honest, this business is a little bit of an adventure, which I think is what makes it great. I love adventure. I like women who think deeply about things that are also kind and that like to collaborate on um, new ideas, right? So this is my list of non-negotiables. These are mine. If you copy these, it's not going to work for you. They've got to be the ones that are important to you, okay? So this is recruiting. So what I'm going to do with this paper now, what if instead of only pursuing and focusing on those two groups, you started looking at these qualities, right? And thinking about every woman in your life, every customer 
And every person sitting in front of you and ask yourself, does she have some to most of my qualities? Okay. And you threw out the care for the interest scale and you pursued her, right? In fact, when people check these boxes for me, I kind of glance at their interest scale and I'm like, oh, she's a two. Well, I'm still going to ask her because she checks my boxes. I want to pursue her as humanly possible as I can um, instead of just giving up, right? And being like, oh, she's a two. No, I'm going to offer her the information because she might be looking at the unicorn and going, that's got to be animatronic. There's no way that's real. I've got to ask my friends about this. Is that really, a, did I really just see a unicorn? Did I really just see that? Have you guys ever saw something? Um, I remember one time we were living in our old house and I saw this like giant bunny looking thing hopping on its feet. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I've never seen that. It was a jackrabbit. I had never seen a jackrabbit before in my life. It was like four feet tall. It was the most terrifying thing I've seen <laughs> in Minnesota. Um, and I'm like, Darren, you got to come over here because I could not believe what I was looking at. And he's like, that's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I'm like, well, thank you. So we have this story of the jackrabbit. We've never seen it since, you know, it gets bigger every time we tell the story, you know, how these things go. So your people like this are doing that at your parties and you're just like blowing it off because you're like, oh, she's not interested. She's a two. No, she's like looking at the jackrabbit going, is that thing really real? Okay. Um, so going back to this, okay, this is the last point where we're losing people is we're not following up and following through. And here's how I do this. I never leave an appointment without another appointment. Okay, and I'm not just talking bookings from bookings. I'm talking because even if I book from a booking and I'm going to hypothetically be seeing her again, I still don't leave that appointment without a team building appointment. So you never leave your appointment without an appointment. And by that, I mean a team building appointment. Again, going back to the example I gave earlier, um, where, you know, consultants will tell me about their appointment and they say, oh, yeah, there's some great potentials there, but I have to follow up. And I think about it like, girl, there are women at that appointment with some to most of your qualities and you just left it to chance. Because if you just say, oh, I'll follow up with you next week, you try calling her, you can't get a hold of her. She's ghosting you. Like this whole thing starts happening. So here's what I do at the end of my appointments. I, this is, this is all I do at the interscale, to be honest. Okay, this girl's name is Amy. I'm going to protect the innocence information. Amy, you were a two on the interest scale. Tell me about that. That's all I do in the individual consultation or if I'm on Zoom, you were a two, tell me about that. And it gets Amy talking. So I can find out like what Amy's hang up is with the unicorn. <laughs> and, and then I always ask this and I hardly ever get a no to this. This is what I call my magic script. Okay. Would it benefit you to learn more about Mary Kay? Would it benefit you to learn more about Mary Kay? All I would do is answer your questions and see if it's a fit for you or not. I almost never get a no to that. I still get some no's, so I'm not like perfect. But would it benefit you? And she says, yes. I say, great. I have this great video. Or you could send your career survey link or whatever. And... And she goes, great. Okay. Yeah. I can, you know, watch a video or whatever. I have this great link. I'm going to send it to you. Now I make this sound like I'm coming up with it just magically off the top of my head. So I tell her about the link and I say, you know, Mary, just coming up with this off the top of my head. Mary, would it be okay if I called you either? And then I always pick the next day or the next day. So meaning today is uh, Tuesday. If I was doing an appointment today, I would say, can I call you either tomorrow or Thursday and see what you thought of it? Just really quick. I almost never get a note to that. Yeah, sh sure. You can call me Thursday. A lot of consultants stop right there. Thursday's good enough. Okay, I'll call you Thursday. Girl, you don't got a time. You don't have an appointment. Okay, I want you to imagine your dentist saying, yeah, Mary, just show up anytime you want Thursday. No, you got to show up at like 8, 10 in the morning on Thursday. You do not have an appointment if you do not have a date and a time that you are going to call her. 
That is not an appointment. So if you say, I will call you Tuesday. Nope, not an appointment. That's like a, it's a, it's a triangle appointment. So a full circle or something. I don't know. It's not complete. That's the point. So um, get that appointment. Then what you're going to do is when you get home, I have a rule that when I get home. So if I set an appointment with Amy to call her to, to check on her information, uh, when I get home, if it's an in-person appointment or if I hop off Zoom, I do not engage in stretchy pants behavior or go watch Netflix or have a glass of wine behavior until I have texted all of the links the videos, the whatevers to the prospects that I met that night, because once you settle in, now it's tomorrow that you're sending it. And y'all, this is ticking. You waited a, you waited 12 hours to send her a link. No, nope. you do it as soon as you get home from the party. I'm getting so bossy here, but like I'm passionate about this because this is how I've recruited, done quarter sharing 10 times in, in 19 years. It's just being, feeling a sense of urgency you know, would it benefit you seeing, you know, what's in it for them? Would it actually benefit you? And they, they like that approach, right? It's not like, would you do this for me? Or, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with those. I've done all of those things, but I've just found when I just really make it about her, she's receptive, right? But I'm thinking about this in my mind, like, okay, it, it'll benefit you. Yay. Well, let's move it along since you said it would benefit you. So I make that appointment. I text the link when I get home. And whatever, you know, I'll be calling you at, I reiterate the appointment time. I am I will be calling you Thursday at 6, 10 p.m. Um, I'll also send a reminder that morning. So then it's Thursday morning. I say, Amy, I'm calling you tonight at 6, 10. Super excited to um, just chat with you. All I'm going to do is answer your questions and see if it's a fit for you or not. I reiterate what I'm doing. Um, and I also sometimes will say, even if you're not interested, I still really value just, you know, seeing what you what you thought of the information. And then I talk to Amy, right? So those are, you guys, that's the tips, right? It Our team building at the actual appointment does not have to be perfect, nor does it have to be fancy. It's just that you're working full circle. And here's the thing, you guys, when you're booking, selling, sharing the opportunity, doing everything, I mean, if you're gonna get ready, put your makeup on, get in the car, drive to someone's house, do an appointment, or you're going to mail the samples, follow up with the people on it for a virtual appointment. Why wouldn't you max it out? And not just for you, but I found that when I work full circle, people have a really good experience at your appointment. And you want people to say, wow, doing a beauty session with Emily is an experience, like in a good way, like doing a, a beauty session with me is an experience. You, maybe that's an affirmation you start saying to yourself is doing a virtual beauty session with me is an experience or doing an in-person beauty session with me is an experience. And the reason it's an experience is because you work full circle instead of full triangle. Then maybe what is what you've been doing. So anyway, I hope this helps you and go get, go recruit your list of non-negotiables and see what happens in your business for real.